coming up tonight on SLU News 22. A deadly typhoon hits the Philippines. Will we see snow tonight? The Cosby Show star planning his comeback. And local Tedrews catching fire. Plus national news and weather. Live from the Bush Student Center, this is SLU News 22. Good evening. I'm Gabriel J. Gallup. And I'm Sean Everson. Thank you for uh, joining us this evening. The Student Government Association will be awarding five $1,000 scholarships for the spring semester of 2014 to juniors and seniors who have exhibited extraordinary involvement and in service here at St. Louis University. Applicants must have a GPA of at least 3.0 and have completed at least two semesters here at St. Louis University. Applications must be submitted to the Student Involvement Center by 3 o'clock p.m. this Friday, November 15th. To access the application and a list of complete qualifications, please see the SGA official website. Applications are also now open for first-year experience leadership positions. If you believe you would like to be a SLU 101 leader or a FLOM leader, learning community mentor, commuter assistant, SES peer mentor, transfer mentor, or University 101 peer instructor, you can learn more about the positions and apply online by searching First Year Experience on SLU's website. Jill Swed is in the uh, winter, center, winter Weather Center sorry, for our, with our first forecast for this evening. So Jill, what are we, what are we looking at? Uh, you know, Gabe, you were on the right track. We are starting to see some winter weather beginning to roll its way in, but it's not quite here just yet. Some of the light rain showers are beginning to move in just after the 7 o'clock hour, and temperatures are falling considerably from what we were seeing earlier today that you could probably feel that strong cold front moving through around dinner time tonight and you can see temperatures are now falling into the 40s we're at 46 in downtown st louis but a few warmer spots in sparta where that cold front is just slow ever so slowly beginning to drift through that community as well so looking at radar right now we are seeing those light rain showers moving through as the evening progresses the air will get colder and we'll begin to see some snow beginning to fly around as well we're not going to be seeing accumulating snow, but we are going to be seeing a few flurries flying possibly this evening. It is also going to be a very chilly night as we'll be dropping down into the mid-20s for a low temperature and very blustery with some gusty north winds overnight tonight. It's going to be a chilly start tomorrow and throughout the day as we are going to be seeing an Arctic cold front beginning to slide through, just bringing with it a lot of cool, cold, not cool, cold Canadian dry air. So we'll see those light flurries and rain showers overnight tonight we only in the 30s tomorrow afternoon, and we'll see a very slow climb in temperatures back to normal by the end of this weekend. I'll be back in just a few minutes with a, greater, a better look as to when we can see, be seeing that snow arriving later this evening. Gabe, back to you. Thank you, Jill. Saturday, November 15th from 7 to 10 p.m., join HALO in the Center for Global Citizenship for the fourth annual Salsa Extravaganza. This event will consist of free sauce lessons from 7 to 8 p.m. from local instructor Jose Hernandez and will be followed by a performance. There will be an open dance floor and DJ for the rest of the evening. Free refreshments and snacks will be provided. For more information, check out the flyer on SLU TV's Facebook page. The Math and Computer Science Club will be hosting certified Mathematica trainer Calvin Michaud this Wednesday, November 13th in room 142 of Ritter Hall. Mr. Michaud will speak about the use of the Mathematica programming language and prototype ideas. There will be extensive sim simulations and in-depth explanation of the scope of the Mathematica language. No prior knowledge of Mathematica is required. The Great Issues Committee will be hosting Animal Planet's Jeff Corwin next Monday in the Wool Ballrooms at 7 p.m. His talk will include stories of his adventures in the field and protecting wildlife and the environment. Mr. Corwin will also be showcasing some exotic animals. This Thursday, November 14th at 7.30 p.m., Hunter Hayes will be performing at the Fox Theater. Hayes is a platinum-selling country star, a three-time Grammy-nominated artist, and will perform new songs from his self-titled Deluxe Edition release, which hits stores June 18th. This performance is part of Hayes' Let's Get Crazy Tour 2013. Only a handful of tickets remain for sale online. In today's world, it is not uncommon to see pharmacies, floral shops, and cooking classes in the same grocery store. But now Schnucks, the Midwest and St. Louis chain, has taken the next big step into healthcare 
and Schnooks has opened up its first uh, infusion solutions facility on Page Service Road in September to treat acute and chronic conditions. This infusion therapy involves injecting medicine through a needle or catheter. It is used for conditions such as infected, infectious diseases, nutrition disorders, immune deficiencies, cancer, and much more. Nurses, pharmacists, and technicians prepare infusions and administer them either in the patient's home or in the factory's ambulatory infusion center. Um, Michael Abrams, managing partner at, the Saint, at a St. Louis healthcare consulting firm, said that the new venture is a smart move of schnooks. Abrams says that infusion centers are profitable and attractive to customers and insurance companies. This new market looks to be a great move for this local St. Louis grocery store. Next Monday, November 18th at 7 p.m., Selena Gomez will be performing at Chaffetz Arena in her Stars Dance Tour 2013. Gomez is a worldwide, multi-platinum selling singer and actress. This St. Louis performance will be the end of her 56-city world tour. Tickets are still available at Ticketmaster.com. Don't go away. We'll be back with more things eventually. Welcome back. Venezuelan Vice, oh, sorry, Venezuelan President Nicolas Maduro attempts, attempts to defend the poor during the upcoming holiday series may has caused com more conflict than it will resolve. Maduro imposes government-controlled fair prices, particularly at electronic and has struck electronic stores and has sent soldiers and or inspectors into a variety of stores to monitor and report unreasonable price increases. Unfortunately, this movement has seemed to be perpetuating chaos and an uncontrolled crowds outside of shops around Venezuela. Many attribute the corruption and excessive presence of the government in the economy as the root of the nation's economic distress. Regardless, the country will continue to attempt an economic reform after the death of former President Hugo Chavez. On the 11th hour of the 11th day of the 11th month in 1918, history was made when the Allied nations and Germany signed an armistice. The signing of the document ended the World War I hostilities between these nations. On this day, we honor and thank all members of the United States military in all wars. Veterans Day pays tribute to all service members living and dead, but especially pays tribute to those who are living, who have served our country during war or peacetime. This day is marked by parades and services, but the best way to celebrate this day is to thank all the veterans who are in our lives today. U.S. Marines have arrived in the Philippines today to aid in rescue and recovery operations after the country was hit by a deadly super typhoon. Hayan on Friday, on, oh, typhoon Hayan on Friday. The devastation is stunning and has left as many as 10,000 people dead. Survivors of the typhoon are in desperate need of food, water, and shelter during this recovery time. U.S. Marine General Paul Kennedy spoke of, of the devastation, saying, I don't believe, quote, I don't believe there is a single structure that is not destroyed or severely damaged in some way. Every single building, every single house, end quote. Residents are spending time looking for relatives and picking up the pieces that Mother Nature has torn apart. The Filipino community is ready to rebuild their houses except, and accept what happened and move into the future. Coming up next, your, weekend for, your work week forecast. Stay tuned. And welcome back, Meteor meteorolo oh, meteorologist, sorry, Jill. Jill Sweat <laughs> is here with us for your extended forecast. So, Jill, what are we looking at this you week? You know, we're, Mother Nature is going to remind us that winter is not too far off this week as we are going to see some much cooler temperatures head into the middle portions of this week. And even overnight tonight, we could see our first chance of some snow flurries. Not necessarily accumulating snow, but those flurries will certainly be flying tonight. But it wasn't much of that way earlier in the day today. And we were well above normal for our high temperature. At Lambert, we hit 66 this afternoon. This is much cooler here on Twin Campus, but our normal high temperatures are only in the mid 60s with mornings starting off right around 40 degrees. Outside right now, we are starting to see some light rain showers falling as that cold front is, is, is beginning to slide on through. Our temperature is knocked down to 46 degrees and also those winds are certainly gusting out of the north at 15 right now sustained wise, but they're gusting up miles an hour. Overnight tonight, it's pretty plain and simple. It's going to be very chilly. By 10 o'clock, we won't be seeing any rain showers or any flurries at that point, but our temperature will be right around 35. It looks like our greatest chance of seeing that mix of some rain and some snow will be in the early morning hours tomorrow. So while we're sleeping, so you may, if you're still studying, you may be able to still see those flurries flying. But in time for early morning classes tomorrow, those flurries should all be moved out. It's just going to be a very chilly start to the day as we'll be at 26 by 7 and not much better by lunchtime. The sunshine will be coming out, but our temperature will only be in the low 30s. 
the left wear scarf, the gloves, everything, and just be prepared for a pretty brutal day tomorrow. Not much better on Wednesday, still very chilly, warming just slightly into the low to mid 40s for a high temperature, but we'll see a slow, pretty steady climb, cold to normal high temperatures by the end of this week and head into the weekend. But overnight tonight, our first real taste of winter, we are dropping down to 25 degrees overnight with snow and rain likely, pop most likely after midnight. So a very blustery evening head into tomorrow. A chilly day as we'll only be in the mid 30s for a high temperature, but the sun is gonna come out tomorrow on the bright side. Looking at our five day forecast, not much to say, or not pretty much a lot of the same. Pretty cool temperatures, sunshine returns starting on Tuesday, but then we'll slowly begin temperatures climbing closer to 50 degrees by Thursday, but still well below normal. And we'll see a little bit of a change in the temperature I think Sunday as the next or the next cold front will be arriving. But so if you like some winter, you're finally gonna get to see it. I know a lot of people have been waiting for that snow. So it's not gonna be accumulating, but it's gonna be flying from the sky. So I, know. I mean it's been forever since we've dropped below freezing, but right. dropping thirty degrees in a matter of I know. twelve hours. Exactly. Yeah. It, this cold front is pretty strong. It's gonna be cooling temperatures off across the greater portions of two thirds of the United States. Areas even in the southeast will be seeing their first frost overnight tonight and also tomorrow. All right. Very interesting, very interesting. Thank you, Jill. Next, sports and entertainment news, including news from everyone's favorite Huxtable and a win for the Bilkins. So please, stay with us. Welcome back. Everyone's favorite Huxtable is in the process of developing a new sitcom for primetime television. Bill Cosby is working with one of the producers of the show, Tom Werner, to create a comedy centered around a loving, honest family with all their children. Cosby says that viewers are desperate for a show with, quote, a married couple that acts like they love each other, wards and all, children who respect the parenting, and a comedy of people who make mistakes, end quote. Cosby is simultaneously hoping to revive his animated series, Fast Albert and the Cosby Kids, as an animated comedy where the viewer may even learn a lesson or two. The technology industry is in the process of making cell phone screens curved, flexible, portable, and pressure sensitive. Apple says that the next iPhone will feature a much larger curved screen and spatial sensors that can detect the touch is light, detect if the touch is light or heavy. Meanwhile, Samsung is developing both cellular phones and tablets that will find in half much in half much like women's makeup compact, increasing portability while maintaining the large screen size and touchscreen features. Samsung host hopes to release phones with foldable displays by the end of, the two, of 2015. Unfortunately, it will most likely take much longer than this for the new technology to reach the bulk of co consumers. The Ted Drew store at 6726 Chippewa Street closed on Sunday after a small fire, an electrical fire appears to have started in the store's attic sometime around midday Sunday. No one was hurt and firefighters quickly put out the fire. A store employee said that the damage was minor. If you are a Ted Drews fan, don't fret. Ted Drews reopened this morning at 11 a.m. Junior Grandy Glaze recorded his first career double-double, double-do-double, I think double-do-bubble, I don't know if that's both hypo, I think it's just double-double, with 16 points on a 7-7 shooting and grabbed 10 boards to lead the Bilkins to a 87 to 64 victory against Southeast Missouri State this Friday night. SLU got to a slow start and trailed 35 to 34 at half, but a 21 to two run in the second half propelled the Bills to a season opening win. Senior Dwayne Evans also chipped in 16 as four Billikens scored in double figures. SLU goes on the road this week to face uh, SIU Edwardsville and SIU Carbondale before returning to Chaffetz Arena on November 21st, where they will face off with Oral Roberts. Rams first round draft pick Tavon Austin had a career day as the Rams crushed the Colts in Indianapolis 38-8. Austin scored three times, including a 98-yard punt return and touchdown catches of 57 and 81 yards. The Rams are now 4-6, heading into their bye week. The Rams will host the Chicago Bears when they return to action in Week 12 on November 24th. So Tavon Austin goes off, and now the Rams have to, I guess, cool off. Mm -hmm. 
as they go into their bye week, but we're going to see temperatures cool down oh, absolutely. a lot here soon. Absolutely. It kind of reflects what the Rams are doing right now. So we are <laughs> we saw a strong cold front move through earlier this evening, and it has certainly cooled temperatures off. We were in the mid-60s this afternoon. We're already dropping down into the mid-40s. Temperatures aren't going to go, are just going to continue to head into the basement as that cold, strong cold front moves through. We are going to see our first chances for some snow overnight tonight. Not going to be accumulating snow, but the, flare, the flurries will be flying. And we're going to be this is a pretty chilly pattern over the next few days, slowly climbing back into the mid-50s head into the weekend. All right. Thank you very much, Jill. Well, that's our show for tonight. Thank you for watching. Don't forget, you can always get the latest movie reviews and news online at slutv.slu.edu or follow us on Facebook and Twitter because we have both of those social networking mediums. We will be back here next week at 7 p.m.